Hello and welcome back to my channel and happy new year. I hope you are already having a great start to your new year. I am just so excited for this brand new year because I am actually here in my new studio space. It's a shed that we converted into a studio that I could paint and record and teach tutorials from. I have so many dreams to teach a lot more tutorials, so be sure to hit subscribe if you aren't already a subscriber to my channel. Uh, today for the very first Paint With Me video, we are going to be painting a whole variety of different hearts for a Valentine's Day. Um, tutorial. This is actually going to be part one to a two or maybe a three part series. Um, so this is the paint with me portion where we will learn different techniques of watercolor and paint a whole variety of hearts. And this tutorial actually comes with a free printable outline. If you just want to scroll down in the description of this video, you can sign up there and it is going to send the printable outline straight to your email inbox for free. So you don't need to worry about sketching these perfect hearts. I want to describe your paints, find a comfy place, and turn on some music, and let's just get to painting. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with today's tutorial. And it's going to be a great one because if you are fairly new to watercolor, this is just going to be a really great exercise to getting warmed up, learning your brushes, your paints, and so it's a great way to explore different techniques with watercolor. We'll be doing a wet on wet technique on some of them. We'll be doing a wet on dry, just doing a whole different variety of hearts. But okay, so what you'll need to do is just grab any type of brushes that you have. I have a variety of sizes over here. Um, I use a, I'll link actually all of the supplies that I'm using down below so you don't need to worry about um, catching what I'm saying. Um, just check the description down below this video. So I have a variety of brushes, my paper towel, I have my water jar, and my uh, watercolor paint set, which I'm actually using an uh, etcher paint set. I love it because it's got really vibrant colors, and today I really wanna have some fun with vibrant colors. So this is um, in lieu of Valentine's Day coming up. So that is why we are painting a variety of different hearts. Let's just grab any brush you have and start getting our paints activated with water, especially if yours are like mine that are dry. So I'm just taking a little bit of water and getting them um, activated. So the colors that I'll be using a lot today naturally are going to be more in the reds and the pinks because of Valentine's Day. So here's a really bright magenta. Um, if you have purples, those are fun colors to be able to um, work with as well for our Valentine's Day um, hearts. So here I have a variety of colors there. And you could even use, I mean, have fun with this. If you want to have um, other colors in there, go for it. So, But I'm going to stick with more of the warm color scheme um, because I am a pink lover. So I'm going to do that. I might add a little bit of purple. These colors in this watercolor palette are so saturated, so they are very bright and vibrant. Let's start. Um, since we have quite a few hearts, let's just get started. So I'm going to put quite a bit of paint on my brush and quite a bit of water, and I'm just going to fill in this first heart. So I'm actually using um, not my professional water grade or watercolor grade paper. Um, I'm using a student grade paper. Still has nice texture. They claim it's a 140 pound cold press paper, um, but it's not like a professional 100% cotton paper. And I'm okay with that on items and or projects that I scan in to create items or products. Um, the other thing too is that I'm going to be cutting these out and if it's just for a fun project, I'll tend to keep the more expensive paper for paintings that I intend to have for custom portraits or ones that I'm going to um, hang up. So have a variety of papers within your, um, your stash because you never know what you'll need um, and what you want to work on. What you really want to do is make sure that you just continue to paint and I hope these tutorials do bring you a little bit of uh, fun and joy throughout your busy days and weeks. These would make a really pretty card. You could even frame this piece once we're done. 
Um, and also don't forget, like I mentioned, the printable outline is also available for free. So you don't need to worry about sketching hearts on your own. I have this um, outline available. If you just take a look down below in the description, you can sign up and it'll uh, land right in your email inbox. Okay, so there is our very first heart. And before that one dries, so right now I'm going to show you the wet on wet technique. Before this one dries, I'm going to grab another color. So something um, that should be able to stand out. So let's grab, I'm just going to grab this orange. And while this is still wet, I'm going to drop it in and see what it does. Honestly, I don't know. I've never explored too much uh, with these paints in doing these techniques, but what I want to see is just a little bit of expanding and blooming of the color on top of the wet. Okay, so very subtle, but I, I do like that. That's nice and light. You could also try another color in there. I actually think I'll try a yellow. So let me get my yellows activated here. Again, I just add a little bit of water, grabbing quite a bit of paint, and maybe I'll drop them inside of the orange and see what happens. It's important to note that all watercolor different brands are going to react differently, so don't be discouraged if you're not seeing the same thing happen. It also will depend on how much water you're using and how much paint. So very little color of that yellow coming through. Let's do our next heart and let's do a little bit of a lighter color. So what I'm going to do is just grab any of my pinks or reds but I'm going to use more water and less paint. And that is what's going to allow me to see a lighter color than having, you know, I had in this first heart where I had a lot of paint and a lot of water. So that's another really important thing with watercolor is that if you want to lighten the color or get a lighter value, just add more water. So here we are adding more water. You can even just pick up more water and not add more paint if I wanted to get even lighter. Like this. And I will let this one dry and I'll come back and do a fun little pattern or color on top of it for a wet on dry technique. So each time that I'm looking to start a new heart, I like to grab or not grab, <laughs> blot my paper towel and get more of a clean brush. So this next one, let's stick with more of that fun bright orange. If you have an orange in your palette, I just love how bright. I don't use this palette a whole lot, It only if I'm doing like some really fun, vibrant um, paintings because they are such bright colors. Okay, so now I have quite a bit of paint on my brush and I think I will do this one in stripes. So I'll just take this orange and doing my best to stay within the heart line, we'll just do some stripes. And so for this one, it'll be a great practice to show how much pressure you can push down with your brush, depending on what type of tip you have. So this one doesn't have a super pointed tip to it, um, but the more pressure you're going to apply to the paper, the thicker the line um, that will go onto the paper. So that is something to also get to know with your brushes is how heavy or how much pressure to apply. Now I didn't have to pick up any color, I had so much on my brush that I was able to make it pretty much the entire way with that same amount or same value. Okay, so now while this is still wet, it's actually not as wet, so I don't anticipate it um, blooming or bleeding like this first heart did, but let's go through and add in color between those. Just 
just grab one of my pinks. Again, have quite a bit on my brush and I'm going to fill in right next to it. So depending on how wet that orange line was, is going to pull that water and paint into it. So I'll probably find that some will pull it in and some won't. So you can see that it's already starting to blend and bleed or bloom it, oops, into the orange. And I got a little heavy handed on that one. But we are just having fun exploring how much water to paint to have on our brush and what that um, comes across on paper. It's a really wonderful warm-up tutorial too if you are looking to paint some more after this one. It's great just to do a little bit of a warm-up, get your paints activated and see how much uh, or even see the colors too. If these colors are new to you, then it's good to have even a test swatch paper next to you. And okay, so here I have some of the colors blended into this orange. So this one was a lot wetter, which makes sense because that's the first line that I painted and had a lot of water and a lot of paint on that brush to start. Okay, so now I have <laughs> a lot of my orange and reds up top. Let's do some purples and pinks. So I'll just take my purple. I'll even use maybe a little less amount of paint and more water. And as you can see, I'm still sticking with this brush. It's kind of a medium sized brush. I'd say it's about a four to a six size brush. Again, all the supplies um, across different brands ha will have, you know, a size four will not be the same as it will be for a different brand. So just know that, but generally speaking, it's a medium to smaller size brush. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and do that on one half and let's fill in the other half with a different color. So here I have pink, more water, less paint on my brush again, so it's not going to be as saturated as those first, or that first part. Um, so let's get it close to where we just were and watch what will happen. And just have a nice transition before that purple dries. You can even run some of that pink right over top to help fade and feather or blend them together. Okay, I'm going to let that one dry. We'll move on to our next one. Let's do our next one in, let's see, how about a yellow? I have this really, really bright lemony yellow. Might be a little too bright, but let's just see. Okay, so it is very bright, but that's okay. I think it'll be pretty once I add in some pink and I want to show you or even red and I want to show you what it's like to color mix red on the paper rather than color mixing on your um, palette. It's another thing too is that you can color mix on your palette or let the colors play together on the paper. Okay so there I have my yellow heart and I will grab, let's see, actually maybe I'll just grab this reddish color and doing another just drop in. And let's see what happens. Let's see, this red might be a little too stark and it might not create the orange color that I thought it was going to. All right, 
So let's see if I just take a slight amount of red or pink and layer it on top. And so I don't have as much paint on my brush. Now I'm just doing less and I can start to see the layering and the blending of that color turning more into that orange. So different amount of paint and water is creating a different shade uh, when we're mixing the colors right on the paper. Okay, so let's go back to our purple and let's do just some fun different directions of lines. It's kind of more of an abstract creativity um, lesson. So let's grab pink. You could do orange and do the complementary color. I think I will just do some more like this. Kind of going in different directions, trying to stay inside the lines. And again, I will be cutting these out so I could leave that white in the background of this heart and I will be able to see the actual shape because naturally I'm going to cut them out. So, um, but if you wanted to frame this, I suggest maybe filling in the white pieces all the way so you see all of the entire heart shape. But right now I'm going to leave that. Let's go back to orange. And let's do, let's see. So we've done some dots, we've done some lines. Maybe let's do some more diagonal lines this time. So this time I am going to do some diagonal lines and I'll fill in the gap with maybe a couple other colors. So I don't have a whole lot of water and paint on my brush. Definitely less than I did up top here. Okay. Actually, what we could do is a plaid. So we could do another direction going this way. And what I would recommend, if we do that, um, what I'd recommend is that we will wait and do the lines once they dry. So that way it's actually going to create a wet and dry, but it's going to do a transparent layer on top and it's going to create a darker piece where the two colors overlap. So I will let this dry I will go back through and add in probably another color just so we have a more variety. Um, we'll see. Maybe I'll just leave that white and orange. Let's go to our next heart. And this one, let's actually bring in a little bit of the blues. So I have a turquoise color here. And that would play really nicely with the pink or the purple. So again, if you wanted to, to stay more in the warmer tones, I would say skip this blue. Um, but since we're just having fun, let's go ahead and just gotta do a few little fun blobs and shapes in here. So grabbing more paint just kind of having fun like this and then what I'll do is grab a different color again what I always do is just clean off my brush with my water and dab my paper towel so let's do a really vibrant color so how about this red magenta color and let's see how they react to each other just pick up a little more water and I see a little bit blending and blooming into each other not a whole lot so and again this paper is not going to blend and bloom 
quite as well as 100% cotton paper would do it. Um, you kind of will see the idea of it, but the paper is going to really make a huge difference when it comes to doing some of these techniques. So if you do have 100% cotton paper that you would like to give this a try, definitely do that. Okay, so that's a fun little abstract. I love those colors and how they are playing together. Okay, let's try something new. Ooh. Try something new here and let's bring our yellow into our piece here as well. So let's do a variety of yellows. How about typically a palette will come with this really bright yellow lemony color and then also like a yellow ochre or some type of medium yellow color. So let's go ahead and give that um, those combination of colors together. So let's see. I think I will actually, you know what? Here I got all that paint on my brush. I think I want to start with a little bit of a darker golden yellow in the background. So again, yellow ochre, some type of medium yellow gold color. And then I think I will go back through and see if I can get the lighter color Usually you don't layer the lighter colors with watercolor on top of a darker color because it's a transparent paint. It's not like acrylic or gouache and it needs to be layered from light to dark. But let's just see if we can shift the wetness and the water of this yellow around before it dries. Okay, grabbing that nice bright yellow. You could use white to try and play with that. And I'm going to drop that in. So as you can start to see that it is actually pushing. Now I don't want to push it around too much, otherwise it's just going to blend. So we're just trying to really just dab it in there it's really subtle. So yes, more dots, but dots are always a nice way just to kind of see how um, the paint's reacting. Not a lot of contrast. Actually looks better on camera for the contrast. All right. And I can also show you too, once this dries, what it's like to lift dry watercolor paint and lighten the paper after um, this one dries. So next let's go through with our purples. Looks like we could bring the purple back down here. Um, the purple would actually balance really nicely in the center. I'm just thinking that if I were to frame this what I would how I would want to um, my eye to move about the paper. Okay so Let's do, let's do another um, stripe and let's go this direction this time. Uh, let's see, I always forget where my colors are. So I'm just going to grab a little more purple. And let's show it getting darker. So grabbing more paint, less water. as we work our way this direction all right grab a little more might even try to lighten some of them up this direction just so we can show more of that ombre effect so Whatever I have on my pal or my paintbrush, I'm just going to add some water and add my paper towel. Oops, and that still looks way too dark. I just want a nice light color for this one. Okay. And less water is going to kind of make it look, it'll make it look lighter, but then if you have too little of water, it might create like that dry brush texture effect. 
Um, okay, so while this one's still wet, I don't really have anything on my brush. I'm just going to swipe through that and get rid of that paint and swipe it through again just to help lighten that piece a little bit. It's a nice way to lift paint. Let's do that for this one as well. I kind of had this idea after I already got started with these purple stripes, so just make do. So you can kind of see that ombre effect from light to dark. You can even add more paint to the one down here if you need to make it darker. Okay. I'm going to let that one dry. And let's see, let's go back to this one. I think I will work more in this light pink. And let's see, I always forget which one is the pink. This is kind of a magenta. I'll just add more water. Add even more water. <laughs> more water. These are such saturated paints, which is so fun. Um, but it's also showing me that I don't need a whole lot of paint on my brush. And so I'll experiment too with holding your brush more upright and what that gives you for, you know, a skinnier line versus pushing down a little bit more will give you a thicker line. Okay, that was a really pretty color. And would like to add some more to that one, but I think I will let that one dry and do a wet on dry technique. And for this last heart, we will fill it in with, let's see, I would say, let's bring in the orange again. And I am actually going to, let's see, maybe we can do some bigger dots, bigger polka dots, since we have so many with smaller. Try and get an odd number, always looks best, even if they're half little dots. And let's do more in a different color. And I'll take this red and I'll kind of touch a couple of them and show that depending on how much water was on my dots before, it should bleed and blend. Oop, that one got even bigger. I'll just do a couple on their own. There's no wrong way to do this, so don't feel pressure and just have fun with it. It's my suggestion. Okay. Might even add in a little bit more to some of these just to darken them. Okay. So that looks pretty already. I love that layered look. Some of them are, are blending, but this one looks like it's just sitting right on top of those other orange dots. And I think I'll leave the background to that one white. Again, I am going to cut these out um, but feel free to add more to it. And now I can go back and start to add in texture to the ones that have dried already. So I would say for this one up here, let's add yellow to it. And actually, you know what? Mm. Trying to decide where else I could pull in this blue color, just so it doesn't look like it's hanging out on its own. And it might look best over here on this heart. So let's go back to that one. Just grab our turquoise or any type of complementing color to a different heart. And feel free to rotate your paper if you need to. Um, let's do, let's see, before I decide to go too far, let me just do, how about another heart. So this is going to layer 
This color isn't drastically darker. And I actually think I'm going to switch a brush. I want more of a pointed tip to it. So I will grab something that has a little bit of a better point. Let's try this again. Okay, sorry my camera cut me off there, but all I did was finish that uh, turquoise heart with um, that top layer there just to add another little uh, texture to that heart. I think I might add one more little heart on the inside and see how that looks. So this one I'll actually fill in. And now that we can see actually, so that inside one is wet paint and this outside one is more like dry. So it's drying darker than it is applied to the paper when it is layering. I think I might just go through and add one more piece to the outer edge of this heart, which actually should help make it look a little more um, like a put together design here, a nice outline. So the paint, as you can see, isn't moving or going anywhere because it's now applied to dry, a dry area. So it's not going to blend at all. It's definitely the technique you want to use if you're applying any type of detail in a painting on top of a place that you've already painted. Okay, so a couple more um, fixings to do, or not fixings, but a couple more additions to do to our painting. And let's see, so we want to come on up here to this heart, looking kind of sad, <laughs> just because it's not as much design going on as the rest of our paintings here. So let's add something on top of that. Let's add a darker pink. And I'd like to see if we can do a plaid on top of this one. So just going to start adding in some stripes. It's okay that if they are lighter, some are darker. That is a okay. Let's just add in. And maybe you'll find that you only like the stripe. So maybe I'll find at the end of doing this part that I only want stripes anyways. So just go in like that. Maybe I will leave that. That looks kind of nice. I like how that looks next to the other stripes right there. Um, let's do the plaid actually down here. And I think I will leave this one with a white background. So with a clean brush, we are going back to this orange and we are going to start layering it going in the opposite 90 degree angle. So let's go through like that. And because we are doing the wet on dry, it's actually going to show a darker area. You want to try and keep it to one swipe the best you can. So it's going to overlay those lines and you'll see where it overlays that it's creating a darker layer. So again, that's how watercolor works is that they're darker um, transparent or the transparent layers will create a darker value. Another great way to build up color and detail within a watercolor painting. All right, so there's our orange plaid. And let's come on down to purple here. And let's see. I definitely want to fill in the other pieces to this one. And I think I will go ahead and do it 
I don't really want to go to the complementary colors, so let's do it as, I suppose we could do it as uh, a red, since I am trying to stick through or with my color scheme. So here I just have the red colors, and I have quite a bit of, on my brush here. I am going to start down here where it is the darker values, because I do want it to get lighter where the purple is getting lighter. So here I have quite a bit of paint on my brush. I don't have a ton of water, enough to make it smooth um, and be able to control it. Oops. And um, But I don't want it to get too much. So let's go ahead and just start to add a little bit more water and less paint as we work our way towards this direction. Again, don't worry that if you feel like you have too much, you just have to then apply a little bit of water and dry off your brush on your paper towel and swipe through and pick some of that up. Okay, very little paint, mostly water on our brush as I work my way this direction. And won't even grab any more. If anything, I'll just blot my paper towel, start to apply that, and pick some of it up. I love the way that one turned out. Looks almost dimensional in how it has like a highlight coming in on that direction. Okay. So last but not least, I do want to do one more little application to this heart. And let's see what we can do here. Um, yellow would be ideal. Um, but now, I guess I will show how that could go. Um, it's not going to look as yellow, depending on how saturated and the type of paints you have because this one has quite a bit of color in it. It might stand out as looking yellow, but it's not going to match the original yellow color right on white paper. So let's just do, let's just do tiny little dots. Again, bringing in the dot patterns throughout. And you can kind of see that it's looking kind of like a, so it's layering on top, but it's definitely a different color than our original yellow over here. So let's just add in those little dots. And do some on the sides. All right, there we go for our fun, lighthearted heart tutorial with watercolor, just playing around with our brushes, our paints, and what it's like to do different techniques um, with watercolor just to get a nice warm up. And it's a great tutorial to start the year out. I will be posting tutorials every single um, month over here. Some will come with uh, printable outlines that you can download for free. So check the description below here. And I hope you really enjoyed today's tutorial. Again, be sure to check back for part two of this uh, video seri series because I will be doing a, uh, a variety of DIY projects for Valentine's Day with these watercolor designs. So. Thank you so much for being here. Please connect with me over on Instagram if you wish at Windswept Design Studio. Be sure to hit subscribe um, on my channel so you get notified every week when a new video is posted. All right, thanks so much for being here and I will see you next week.